am dedicated to helping women entrepreneurs create a balanced and healthy lifestyle by providing tools, tips, and resources that elevate health from the inside out. Every episode, myself along with a featured guest, share our Steps to Feel Good Daily journeys on my globally recognized show, Steps to Feel Good Daily with Lana. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Steps to Feel Good Daily with Lana. I'm so excited to share with you an amazing angel in my life and who has been an angel for many years. Um, Her name is Jennifer Bradford. And today the topic of our show is how to wrap yourself in love with spiritual educator Jennifer Bradford. And um, before I bring her up, I'm going to share the oil that I chose because um, this oil, you know, I love to do this, right? So this oil is called wintergreen. And the reason why I chose wintergreen is it is the oil of surrender. It is relying on divine grace, non-attachment, helps you to be teachable and strengthened. So I think we all need a little humility to um, help ourselves to learn more from others. And we have that great opportunity with Jennifer. So before I bring her up from the green room, I am going to share a little bit about her. Jennifer is a visionary. Her name, well, actually, I should give give you her last name as well. Jennifer Bradford is a visionary founder of Birthing Spirit, a transformational venture dedicated to holistic healing um, of the body, mind, and spirit. Jennifer has over two decades of experience in healing education, um, in spiritual healing and education. So I am going to bring her up now and tell you just a little bit more about her. There she is. Hi, Jennifer. (laughs) Nice to see you. I used to see you every day, but I don't get to anymore. It's so sad. So I want to tell you a little bit about what Jennifer does and then have her explain more. So Jennifer seamlessly integrates her gifts as an educator, spiritual friend, and life coach into her offerings through healing sessions, blending shamanic energy and sound healing. Oh my gosh, I love sound healing. (laughs) Sound healing techniques, life coaching, and spiritual guidance. She empowers individuals on a path of self-discovery. So this is very interesting. And I've always been really curious about like what is shamanic? I mean, I've heard lots of things about it, but I don't quite know. But it seems like you've kind of come up with your own way of doing things by blending the shamanic with the sound healing. So first of all, why did you make the choice to become a spiritual educator? And then I want you to tell us a little bit more. So we'll go step by step. (laughs) Uh, Thanks, Lana. Yeah, well, I guess I've been interested in spirituality since I was very young. And um, it was about 20, over 20 years ago that I did a degree in theology in the, at the Franciscan School of Theology. And, um, and I went the MA route, which is more for teaching because I, um, I, I, I was always a teacher. I was already a teacher from the get-go. I was a math teacher in my, early in my career. And um, so when I did my MA, I went that route because that's just who I am. I'm a teacher. Um, and I've used it in doing, helping with retreats. I've used it in, um, teaching at the high school level in theology, that sort of thing. And, um, I intend to continue doing, um, classes for spirituality and, you know, topics related to healing as well. Awesome. So, so what is, how did you start in shamanic and how did that like maybe enhance what you were doing? Yeah. You know, um, Well, I've always been interested in healing, again, growing up as a Christian, I grew up as a Catholic and hearing the stories of Jesus healing and that sort of thing. It was to me, the healing was always spiritual. So the spiritual piece was the foundation of the healing work I do. Right. And so for shamanic healing, that's true as well. But of course, you know, usually when you hear of shamanic um, 
or sh shaman, if you talk about shaman, they're usually coming from, you know, um, more like tribal societies um, and, you know, cultures that are more foreign to us. And so there's now um, a foundation in the United States that's, I would say it's more, um, it's more, it's making it possible for people that are coming from a Christian orientation, such as myself, to be able to learn some of those techniques and, and still, um, integrate, like you can come from any belief system and still integrate the teachings of these shamanic practices. So that's what I do. Um, but it is, I would say the shamanism in general is coming in with this belief that you are calling on spirit to do healing work or, um, you know, get guidance and that sort of thing for people. So it's, it's kind of like, um, it's just really learning techniques that maybe in Christianity, we haven't really continued to teach people how to do that, but in shamanic right. society we have. So we're kind of tapping into the ancient wisdom and integrating that like for me with my own Christian beliefs. I, I like, I had a conversation with some ladies today that were, we're all Christians. Right. And it's like, how do you, how do you bring that Christianity and not, you know, cause some people want to think it's woo woo. Right. But I know that healing is, was a part of Christ and right. that's, it's like tapping into that power. And he talks about, there are heal people that do healing and different types of things. So yeah, I think it's kind of, we kind of came up with the conclusion that there's a big awakening happening yeah. within the, within the Christian society that is helping people to open up to the more like, I would say the power of Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. Right? absolutely. And I, and of course that was alive in, in the time of Christ. Right. And, and he said, you can do all these things that I have done and more. And of course the apostles did. Right. And right. So then I think people just thought, Oh, that was way back then. We can't do that anymore. Right. Um, but there are, like I said, some traditions that have held on to, this way of connecting with spirit, even though they come from a different belief system, but connecting with spirit for, you know, power for healing and guidance and, and life, you know? So. so you're saying shamanic healing is, it's kind of like a tribal American Indian type of healing. That's kind of how they did it. Cause they were definitely super spiritual people. Yeah. I, well, I would say um, when I say shamanic societies, um, the foundation that I'm that I've learned a lot of my shamanic practices from is the Foundation for Shamanic Studies, founded by Michael Harner, and he was an anthropologist at UC Berkeley, um, and he actually studied societies all around the world, and he came up what, with what is called core shamanism. So, so he found that there were these common elements in all of these different societies. So it's not not just in you know the United States, um, but there was African societies that he and cultures that he studied. Um, some Asian cultures, there was, you know, South America from all over, really, that he studied these different cultures and found that there were these common elements. So it was really, it's really fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating to tie us together, because when it boils down to it, we're all brothers and sisters, here, yeah. here, right? So it's like, in whatever, whatever common, um, commonness that we can find within us is yes. is so powerful so yes. i like i like that um, he did that so so yes. how would you say spiritual work has affected your life um well i would say you know i i was again from a very young age i was very spiritual you know i um kind of felt like this connection with jesus early on and um and when i I think it was when I was um, teaching, I was teaching math at the time, but a friend of mine was like noticing I was just constantly reading spiritual books, you know, and not wanting to do my grading. And, and he was like, why don't you just go to theology school? I was like, what, what's that? You know, <laughs> I didn't really know what that was. Um, and and um, there was the church I was going to at the time, the priest there had gone to this same sem seminary, basically it's the Graduate Theological Union and there's many different schools. And, um, and, so, and I knew some students at that, church too that were that had gone there or were going there and so it was just a perfect fit because I found once I found out about that then I and I found there was a Franciscan school there I've always loved St. Francis so I was like oh I have to go there so it was just <laughs> <laughs> so it was an automatic for me it's just been a part of my life since I was young like I said I've always and I've always had this um I've kind of known that that was you know gonna be an important aspect of my life um and I had some experiences early on um and I think teaching about like the love of God in particular is most um, something I'm most passionate about because I know 
that whatever people are going through, you know, um, the focus for like spiritual healing is not like it is for a doctor, right? The focus for a doctor is to help somebody live as long as possible. But right. for someone that does spiritual healing, it's like to help the soul become alive, right? The spirit of the person to stay alive and to be strong and and um, and to be in touch with that true self, right? The true self. That I love the way you said that. That was that was beautifully said. Thank you. So. Um, are you empowering others by your, so basically you're empowering them to show, to connect to God and to their higher self. I mean, is that kind of defining? Yeah. Yeah. Energy? And to release, I know, I know you do. I'm sure you do releasing. Cause as you know, I am, I am an energy. Yeah. energy if you want to call it an energy worker, right? Uh, but helping to release those, and trapped emotions, negative energies that are within us. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I'm just assuming that within the work that you're doing, you're doing that because when we can peel away those layers, that's when the true self can come through, right? That's totally <laughs> <right. laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we, we adapt um, to our environment. And so a lot of those adaptations or survival strategies that we learn as children are things that once we get out of our, you know, home environment, um, we find that those strategies are not necessary or helpful anymore, you know, in some sense, <laughs> right? So, so whether it's from psychologically speaking, things that we need to kind of release or energetically or spiritually speaking, there's a lot that, that we can kind of peel away to get to the inner core that is our true self. That is our true self. Yeah. I like that. And that's when we really stand in our power the most, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So I had asked you the question, what steps do you take to uh, to feel good daily? And you had said that you take a moment each day to bathe myself in light and the light and love of God. So how how do you do that? Wow, that's <laughs> I mean, yeah. is it prayer meditation? I mean, there's yeah. a lot of different ways, but yeah, yeah, it can be many different things. And it can can literally be standing out in the sun and just like standing there and meditating. And I, I sometimes I just feel like the power of the sun, just the way that it illuminates me. And I, I feel that I feel the energy of God coming through that as well. Right. So it could be as simple as that. Um, if it's in the middle of the night, you know, it might be just literally just um, meditating on the love of God. And some people might want reading or something like that to help them get into that. Like, what is that? You know, that might be something that where a book or some kind of something to reflect on might be helpful. Mm -hmm. But if you already have a sense of that, that love of God, just kind of feeling it and calling it in, you know, just literally just closing your eyes and, and asking for that to fill you. And you can see it as light um, or however it comes to you, but just kind of doing your own little meditation where you're asking that, inviting that in, I think is you know, one way to do it. And, and um, I have an, just one more thing. I just, cause I love um, that metaphor. And I, I don't know if I think, feel like you came up with that. I don't know if, <laughs> if I did or you did, but I think it feels like you did from what I said, but <laughs> my friend that made me this beautiful prayer shawl, my friend, Christina Tapman, it's such a beautiful prayer shawl. And, and, and literally when she wrote um, a prayer for me with it, when she gave it to me, it's, it's all about wrapping yourself in God's love. And that to me, it's like, you might have something like this, that, when you think of it, you think of the love of that friend or family member or whoever it's connected to, <clears throat> or just thinking of like, oh, this is this is God and I'm being wrapped in God's love. You know, so there might be something like that. And, and that that to me is part of what this is for too. It's like so that I can feel that when I when mm -hmm. I sit down to, it might be to pray, to read, to meditate. Um, you know, and I do have some grounding meditations I do as well. And I bring in the light and fill myself with the light. Um, so any of those methods, I think, and all of them are, are things that I do. I like the, the concept of the blanket and the warmth, because when we're, when we're baptized or when we're connecting ourselves, we're connecting to the spirit, but we call it the comforter. So that would be <laughs> like, you know, that, that comfort that we are seeking in our lives. Cause sometimes we go through a lot of struggles exactly. and we're like, how do we get through it? And there, you know, the only way that I know is to ask for that comfort and then to release and to let go. Yeah. Um, so I'm seeing that when you're, 
I mean, like when I'm visualizing you standing there receiving that sun, the warmth, the yeah. love of that, that's kind of, I, cause I, I like, I invite the spirit into my life and I do that every day. So it's maybe a little bit of a different way, but I know that when I do that, that I actually feel that love, that energy, that feeling. So it's just, you know, we, we can seek and look and, and, and try everything, but not everything is going to bring us that peace. The only right. thing that's going to bring us that peace is coming to who we truly are and knowing our value. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And I, I was going to say, too, that um, you know, there's really the moments when you're really down, because I've had some more struggles, as you know. I've had yes. some mental health struggles lately. And, you know, my friends have really come through. So I just wanted to say that, too, that sometimes it's hard to do that on your own and to really feel that in, in a low moment, right? Or if you're surrounded by a lot of negativity or whatever. So those are the moments that, you know, just go around, be with the, your friends that are strong, like spiritually, you know, and and let them kind of fill you with that light and love too. That's the other thing. Isn't it nice that that God did not leave us alone? I mean, because since we can't see him, but that he brings those angels into our lives. Absolutely. And I know that I know that you access angels. That's not something that I am, I mean, I'm trying to like get closer to that and understand that more, but I know a lot of the spiritual people um use you know use the power of the angels as well and i mean i know they exist yeah. but i really never knew is there like a little tip that you could say as far as what what that would look like yeah well um like when i start when i do my clearing and setting space for clients especially for the heavier work like um you could say deep possession or the clearing work, you know, right. um, I always call on Archangel Michael is the main one. And, um, but the other archangels as well, Archangel Gabriel and Uriel and Raphael. And so I ask them to surround the four corners of my room and you could do that. You know, you could just ask them to surround the four corners of your room, help them to feel, you know, God's love, um, healing, you know, clarity, um, all of that guidance. Um, so, and, and the other thing, if you want to start kind of getting to know one of the angels, you know, just doing a little meditation where you just, you know, you just kind of sit there and you call in Archangel Michael or whoever, whoever you want to connect with, and you just start to commune, you know, like whatever that might be. And just, you know, you can ask some questions and just see what comes to your mind. Like, you know, how does it feel when I connect to you? Or, or is there a way you can show me that you're here? Like, and it might be, you might have an image come up in your mind or, um, you know, but it, but it's not automatic. It might ha not happen right away, but it's with that daily practice or that regular practice that, that, that connection right. gets strengthened. So the more you do that, the more, and sometimes it'll feel different too. Like Archangel Michael's energy, you might feel a little tingling in your head or in some part of your head, but some, some other connection with another angel or, or Yeshua, Jesus, or whoever, it might feel different, you know, and it might, you know, so, so as you spend more time with each one and you have this different feeling in your body, and or maybe some people like will see see something in their mind's eye. Interesting. I was having a conversation with somebody today that was talking about how they it's like a, a communication, a thought communication. And I know that as I'm increasing in like my intuition, oh, I notice that I can ask questions. So I kind of I get what you're saying. And I think that is um, a great tip that you <laughs> that you shared with us and that knowing that it's not something that we're just automatically going to do it, but it's something. So in my, in my feeling is that we have to open ourselves up to the love of Christ. We have to open ourselves up to that gift. So then from what you're saying, it seems like that's what we have to do with each and every gift or each and every angel. We have to make that effort to reach out and then we okay. receive the gift because we're open to receive it and if we don't we don't receive anything <laughs> right yeah. but isn't michael the one i'm that is like when somebody's really struggling is that like the the most yeah one of the biggest struggles emotional struggles and things like yeah. that yeah, i would say he's definitely the protector angel and <laughs> i've heard even heard um the former spiritual director of mine used to say that he is always there like for abused children People, oh. he often shows up and he's there with them to help them to hold all of the trauma and the pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that was interesting. And I'm sure Jesus does that too. But um, yeah, that sometimes they just show up in these different ways and people, we may or may not know, you know, that I would say that it just, so maybe um, a qualification to what you were saying, like, 
Yeah. I mean, we might not feel it right away. I think they're always there when we ask. So it's not right. like we have to earn their, their, <laughs> their, their trust. Right. They're right. Help us if we ask, but we, it, we won't necessarily feel or, or have a confidence in that connection and know that it's there without right. a lot of practice. Right. But, but right. It also faith is, is one of those things too, though, that even if you can't feel it all the time, your faith will tell you that you know that they're there. You yeah, know? They're, they're helping yeah. you. And that's why when we see all those little miracles in our lives, always give recognition to them because when we do, then more show up, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I do like also that you had said you exercise in nature. Um, and I just know, you know, taking that walk and almost every person that I've had on the show has always said that's one of the things that they do to connect because that's giving us our grounding. So you had given a feel good tip. Tip, you said seek the divine within and to do so focus on spending quality time with yourself, your true self. So we've touched on this a little bit, but it involves focusing on your being rather than your to-do list. <laughs> I love this because I know that when one of the greatest things when I moved to this house is I it's like I had open spaces for things. Yeah. And instead of like fighting and trying to find, it was just like, nothing's going to go there. At one point it just showed up. So mm -hmm. is that kind of what you're meaning about? It's not like you, you're saying, Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Right. No, you, the most important thing is that you love your son. The most important thing is that you're keeping your own peace. Yeah. Is that kind of what you're meaning by that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, anything that really stresses us out. And I know I put the to-do list on there because that is such a classic. And I feel like I'm always behind in my to-do list, to -do list <laughs> like this long, you know? So this is for me. That's what I'm saying. This is for me. <laughs> in fact, today I was going to write an article like, your worth is not based on how, you know, how short your to-do list is. You, know? <laughs> you checked off your to-do list because I think a lot of times it's easy to judge yourself by like, oh my gosh, I only got this much done today. You know? And, um, so like, knowing and and that reminds me of you know the presence the act the, that we're asked to be present and i think of martha and mary in that story of you know um jesus saying was it martha or mary that chose the better half being present to him i can't remember that in that story but but this idea of like really being present with ourselves and and the god within us right and how god right. is speaking to us in any moment because because that to-do list and the, the worldly things that are just like, you got to do this, got to do that. You know, it's so, it can be so um, <laughs> it, disturbing, really, right? It can really disturb our peace. And and when you get to that quiet place and you really are present with what's going on inside of you, how God is speaking to you, what's happening in your family, whatever it is, the people around you, being present to all that's with around you, that's where the gold is, right? That's where those um, special moments are. And that's where you can maybe more clarity on what actually is important to do. <laughs> well, I think uh, at church on Sunday, the discussion was what is the most important things? And it's our, it's us loving, our, loving ourselves, loving God, loving our children, loving our family, loving our friends. Mm. And in reality, in the end, that's really all that matters. Right. And so um, I've also, I remember reading something one time that when our to-do to do list is finished, we're going to be dead. So we have to be thankful that we have that to-do list, right? Good point. <laughs> but you said, and, and allowing, so allowing space for time and emotions to be tended to. Yeah. So, and I love that you say that because emotions... It's like we can let emotions take us over. Yeah. Right. Or we can just acknowledge. So you're saying to tending to that emotion. So when that emotion shows up, you can say, oh, wow, I'm feeling really angry right now. Why am I <laughs> feeling angry right now? Yeah. And then you can dig down and you can let go. And right. that's going to bring you into your truer self. Is that kind of what you're yeah. intending by that or, or another yeah. message? Right. I think that's right. And it, it reminds me of a quote. Um, there's a Franciscan um, priest called named Richard Richard Rohr, and he has a friend. He he quoted her actually, Paula de Arce, who said, "God comes to you in the form of your life," you know. And so, like, how is God showing up in your life? You know, what what events and circumstances are happening, and what are the deeper meanings behind those things that are happening? And you know, um, so kind of really digging in. And I I think you know, um, a lot of us grew up in in cultures or subcultures that are very like 
especially for men, especially for men that you're just supposed to like, just keep trudging forward and like, don't pay attention to your emotions and just <laughs> be, you know, be hard, be tough, you know, <laughs> no, tears. no tears. <laughs> and I think it's actually mm -hmm. what we need to do is actually kind of the opposite is we need to resensitize ourselves to right. our own wounds and the wounds of society and people around us. Um, not that you have to go around crying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you become more resilient when you're able to process right. that. And in fact, the strongest people in the families that people usually, oh, you're too sensitive, you're too emotional. Usually they're the strongest ones because they're the ones that have the ability to process emotions. And they're usually doing the hard lifting of processing those emotions for everybody else in the household. Right. And then the other people are the ones that end up really sick because they held them all inside and they didn't right. address them. So that is right. so like that, that emotional, physical connection, which I think right. is another part of this big awakening that's happening to people yeah. is to realize that if we don't address our emotions, then we're going to be physically sick. And I know that for a fact, because I've lived it. <laughs> you know, you think, oh, I got hit by a car or I got this or I got that. Well, there was something going on that brought that energy to you exactly. for that to happen. Exactly. So this was my tip before we end. My feel good tip was utilizing the power of God within for good opens up for growth and the ability to do hard things. Mm -hmm. And this is a lesson because even doing the show, it was a really difficult thing for me to do and the things that I had to learn to be able to do it so that I know all I did is I kept saying, I can because he can. I can because he can. And everything that I do, I always say that if it's something that's difficult, I say I can because he can. And that gives me that extra strength. And then it gives me that growth. And I can do hard things. That's how I got through accounting, how I did all of that. So it's super, super, super powerful. Yeah. So Jennifer, so how I, I know I have your um I have your website here. So that is the best way for people to reach out to you um, yeah. at, at birthing spirit, birthing spirits.com. And do you um, have like a, an, an offering as far as like, do you have a, a, like a questionnaire or something that people can fill out that you can see if that's a fit or yeah, a well, presentation of some sort, anything that people can call and ask yeah, there's a, um, I think it's on the front of the first page, my homepage. Um, there's a, yeah, at the bottom, there's um, a place where it says contact me for a free 15 minute consultation. And there's a phone number as well as my email address. So it's jenbirthingspirit at gmail.com. And so they can email me or they can call that number and leave a voicemail and I will get back to them and, and we'll have a conversation to see like how I can help them. Um, and then from there, we can set up an appointment if they would like to. Yeah. Well, I can say this for sure before I drop you down the green room that you are definitely an authentic, loving, wonderful, amazing human being, beautiful woman um, and mother. And I'm really thankful that. Oh, thank you, Lana. You too. All, all those things I can say is totally true for uh, of you. And you've been such a great mentor, such a great friend. And I appreciate you for everything you've done and for who you are, most of all for who you are, you know, and the strength that you've shown and all that you've done in your life. You're an inspiration yeah. to me as a single mom and, you know, as a you know, <laughs> wannabe professional businesswoman. Yes, we've gone through hard things together, haven't we? Yes, yes. And we're, and we're living proof that you can get through them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> having friends makes it easier. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you again for everything you've so done. Much. So I'm going to drop you into the green room. Okay, can I um, wipe you? my tears because I am <laughs> able to feel my emotions. And that's a, yeah, good thing. a beautiful thing. It's yeah. Beautiful. And then I'll meet with you. Heart, heart. Heart. That's what, one of the things I love about you too. You're so heartfelt and and you're so authentic as well. And I appreciate that so much. <laughs> Thank uh, you. So just hang out for a minute and okay. I will, uh, we can have a, a, a Christ tale. Uh, we say mocktail or cocktail. I don't do either. So we'll say a spiritual tale. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, the website is HTTP. I don't have an S yet. So it's just HTTP colon slash slash uh, com. just to clarify. Okay. Awesome. And if anybody doesn't, can't reach her to reach out to me, cause I do know how to reach out to her. So thank, thank you, you again, Jennifer. So much. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. So thank you so much. Um, wow. What a, what a, an amazing, sweet woman. Um, I could tell a lot of stories, but, uh, those are all private, but anyway, <laughs> but anyway, um, 
You can reach me at happyhealing.me. I also offer a free consultation. I am the person that can help you to get well as quickly as possible. And if you ever don't know what to do, please feel free to reach out to me because I would love to help you. And uh, thank you again. And till next time, um, say la vie. <laughs> Steps to feel good daily with Lana. Recognize show steps to feel good daily with Lana.